The first throne speeches in England were pretty straightforward. In the Middle Ages, the king would summon a group of mostly nobles and knights to come sit in Parliament. He would then tell them the laws he wanted passed, then they would pass them and go on their merry way. Things got a little dicier during the reign of Charles I, as Parliament tried to flex its muscles. In short, Charles showed up with armed guards to arrest five MPs. There was a civil war, Charles lost his head, and a whole bunch of new traditions around Parliament were born. Including, the monarch and his or her representative is never allowed to set foot in the House of Commons, which is why MPs head over to the Senate for the speech at the request of the Sovereign's Messenger, the Usher of the Black Rod, a person whose only job is really to make sure the Sovereign never comes near the House of Commons. While much of the symbolism remains in Canada's modern throne speech, the content and tone are very different. The House of Commons and Senate still can only start sitting after being summoned by Her Majesty, but while the Governor General delivers the opening speech on her behalf and may write some personal opening remarks, the meat of the speech is entirely written by the government. And rather than locking up opposition MPs for treason, they are now given at least six days to attack, criticize, and debate the speech. And whether these plans and priorities come to pass is entirely up to the House of Commons and Senate to decide.